Good morning. I am calling to order our uh, regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole. My name is Elizabeth Glidden. I'm the chair of this committee, and I'm joined today by Council President Johnson, uh, Council Members uh, Gordon Bender, uh, Council Member Andrew Johnson, uh, Council Member Warsami, and Council Member Goodman, and I expect others will join us on the dais uh, shortly. Um, first thing that I'm going to do is that I have sent around to colleagues a couple of motions that I would like to add as uh, item number, um, I'll just add them as item number 41 to this agenda. Um, they are two motions that relate to workplace issues and uh, we can uh, discuss them at that point in the agenda. So. Uh, I will move to amend discussion on that motion to amend. Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Those two items are added to the end of the agenda. Um, we have a very long consent agenda, so in light of the fact that we have staff here for a couple of presentations, I will do the consent agenda after we do the presentation. So I'd like to invite up uh, our human resources staff to talk uh, about items number 39 and uh, relating to internship program staff directive. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure who's leading us off here. I was looking at Ms. Ferguson, so. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. And as you're getting set up, I'll just mention that this again is a, a presentation that is pursuant to a motion Councilmember Goodman made a uh, number of uh, months ago about how can we have better connections between our internship programs such as Urban Scholars and others uh, to employment opportunities within the city of Minneapolis or permanent op employment opportunities within the city of Minneapolis. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Technical difficulties aside. Yeah, welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, Chair Glidden and committee members. Um, Deborah Kruger and I will be talking today about providing an update for the Pathways uh, Strategies for City Internship Participants. As you all know, one of our primary goals uh, for our workforce is to hire, equip, and retain a qualified and diverse workforce. And internships and pathways programs have been a critical component of building a broad pop pipeline of top talent uh, for the city. Uh, <clears throat> looking at the agenda, uh, we're here today actually to provide an update on progress towards identifying strategies for recruitment, development, and retention, uh, and also evaluating those strategies for step up interns, urban scholars, and other interns as pathways to employment here at the city. Uh, we have successfully offered, the city has successfully offered a variety of internships and pathways programs uh, with a variety of purposes that range from exposing youth to the world of work to programs that are a pipeline to specific jobs. Our agenda today includes providing a high level uh, overview of the current state of internships and pathways programs here at the city. We'll discuss barriers or hurdles uh, that are encountered in moving from a path, uh, participation in an internship or pathways program to uh, actually being hired as an employee of the city. We'll uh, also then talk about potential strategies to increase recruitment, retention, and development uh, of interns. And lastly, we will talk about next steps for actions uh, moving forward. 
On page three, you see a, a recounting of the staff directive, as you alluded to earlier. And what I'd like to do uh, is to introduce Deb Kruger, who will take us through the rest of the agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Welcome. Um, I thought I'd take. I thought it was important to take a step back for a moment and um, understand the purpose and philosophies that kind of shape and guide our internship and internship programs at the city today. So generally speaking, the primary purpose today of city-sponsored internship programs to do a variety of things. Not every internship program has all of these elements, but all of our intern program have some of these elements. Um, everything from exposing young people to the world of work, which is like a career exploration type of internship program, applying their educational knowledge in a work setting, satisfying graduation requirements of a degree program, um, developing leadership qualities, and providing networking opportunities to build social capital of young people. Yeah. As Mary Lynn uh, Tallarico uh, alluded to, we, we, there's many types of internship programs currently uh, going on at the city, whether it's providing career exploration, internships, direct pathways to hire um, for, for uh, young workers. Um, the, so the matrix that's on this uh, particular slide, I've taken the types of internships, bucketed them into the types, talking a little bit about what the purpose, some of the programs that we have, and then really what's the employment expectation currently um, for these types of um, uh, internships. So we, one bucket is career exploration. It's an unpaid career exploration and leadership development of youth designed to spark an interest in a particular field in public sector, whether that be public safety um, or other types of, of fields, uh, of positions that we have here at the city. Types of programs that we currently are involved in are things like Step Up. Um, for, and those are for ages um, 14 to 21. The Fire and Police Explorers Program, the Police Reserves, the EMS Pathways Program that's currently in the high schools. And again, it's not meant, those programs aren't meant to be a direct path to employment, uh, but it's really more about learning about the world of work in a public sector uh, organization. Um, and then we have formal internship programs um, that provide exposure to the world of work, especially the types of work that we have here at the city, um, and or to apply the educational knowledge on the job in their field of study. Some of the programs um, under our internships are Urban Scholars, which furthers both a graduate and undergraduate track, uh, the EMS Academy, things like Community Service Officer, intern, um, and then various job-related department-specific internship programs um, that we have in uh, 18 of the 24 departments here at the city have, have interns typically every year. Um, again, the, the expectation for employment, some are broad and they're not a direct path, um, such as uh, um, the internship program. Others have um, a path that lead into particularly a pathways program. So the internship is kind of step one, morphing into a pathways program, such as um, the community service officer internship. The intent there is that they then become community service officers when they're when they reach the age um, to be able to do that. And last but not least, while it's not an internship program, I did want to um, point out and include the pathways programs that we have. It's not they're not necessarily meant to be for young young workers. Uh, young, young folks to get uh, in employment into the city, though we do um, have a good proportion of them are younger. Um, but they are training programs that are designed uh, to gain the skills necessary to be hired into an entry-level position at the city. Um, and they include both city-sponsored programs as well as um, non-city-sponsored, but we are one employer partner of many where it, it, we're working through a nonprofit agency. So some examples there are community service officer, police cadet, fire cadet, um, public work service worker trainee, um, the 911 telecommunications that just launched in September. Um, we have an auto mechanics that we're just implementing at Roosevelt High School. Um, at Minneapolis Tech Hire, we've hired folks into our entry level um, um, desk side support positions in IT. And the employment expectation there is that these employment programs are meant to be a direct hire into permanent positions at the city.
Um, so then I thought I'd talk placement rates. <laughs> So I've taken um, some different types of, of internship programs, looked over a, a span of years, uh, depending on how far back we have data uh, that goes. We're using a new uh, uh, technology that IT uh, is, is rolling out uh, at Cognos uh, to be able to do some very uh, robust reporting for us around placement rates for our internships. So this, this chart shows the types of placement rates uh, of various intern programs into permanent positions, everything from step up, job-specific internships, and then urban scholars, both the graduate and the undergraduate track. Um, in the matrix, it shows you know, the number that we've hired in those internship programs. So for instance, Step Up and the job-specific internship programs, it's 11 years worth of data, going back from 20, 2006 to 2017. And then for urban scholars, that came in to being uh, created in 2012. So we have data for 2012 through 2017. We have a question from Councilmember Goodman. Um, thank you. So it, this isn't a very good record. No. I mean, if you talk to anyone in workforce development, yeah. they would say not only is that, I mean, look at like urban scholars, graduate or undergraduate, especially undergraduate, only three were hired of 99 and only two are retained and we already know we have retainment rates. Is there a way to focus on that um, more as an opportunity? Because I mean, those of us that work in workforce and there's a lot of people who work in workforce in the city, would say there's probably some things we can do if we made an effort to, to make this a priority. I'm not saying what you've done is bad. It hasn't been a priority. No one's taken it on as an issue. Um, but I do think given the level of progress we've made or lack thereof with hiring women and people of color, this is an opportunity for a feeding into the system. And so I'm, I'm you don't have to read the numbers to us. I'm interested in, okay, we know this isn't great. What are we going to do? Yeah. I, and we have uh, another uh, question. And if it's on the same line, I'd like to just get that out there and then we can see what might be responses. Sure. Council President Johnson. Uh, Madam Chair, it actually goes back a little bit oh, okay. further. Um, and Why to the intern, internship of hospital uh, philosophies. Um, you know, I, I think we're, we're, it's true. We want to expose young people and obviously our step up program, but I, I would wonder, um, do we have any kind of age qualifications in the Urban Scholars uh, program as far as people in college? No. As, it isn't as some, age. Okay, okay. So I would, I would think that in our philosophies, we might want to say something about people making career changes or, um, you know, I mean, we have a whole uh, effort in our, uh, in, in our um, uh, CPED for displaced workers, that kind of thing. That, that we make it clear that it isn't just uh, young people, particularly obviously in the, in the uh, Urban Scholars Program that uh, can benefit from a city internship. That would be true. I think generally speaking, they have been within, you know, right after high school going into college, but that, that certainly is not a requirement. Yeah. So just going back to Councilmember Goodman's point, and it looks like you're about to go through barriers and strategies, although I will say I don't see in here any goals. And that's one of the strategies. Okay. Yeah. And so maybe part of what we need to do is not just receive and file, but come back mm -hmm. so that we can understand that. But just as I remember when you first presented this information or whoever from human resources that kind of teed up when Councilmember Goodman made the, um, what made the motion, I thought at that point we did have uh, some comparison data of what is a typical private sector uh, placement rate for interns into uh, permanent employment opportunities. I can't remember what that statistic was, but I remember that it was discussed in whatever the presentation was here, and it was really shocking. I mean, it's like, I think in the private sector, a typical rate, I know it's up above 50%. It might even be above 75. I can't remember, but uh, maybe you can re remind us. And I think that goes again to just saying there's something not connecting here with, um, how we're focusing on uh, people that we spend enough attention on to bring in as interns and how we um, uh, prepare them for employment, competitive employment um, opportunities. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Yeah, yes, bottom line results. Uh, Council Member Goodman, to your point, uh, we, we, yes, we do see, tend to see more success where there is a more direct correlation in a path to a, a, a specific position at the city, for instance, urban scholar graduates, they all tend to, okay, not all of them. Generally speaking, most of them are in a law degree program and they've been hired into positions in which a law degree um, is either a required or, or a desirable qualification. Um, 
Um, we have we have an individual who was um, in a, in a planning pro a master's degree of a planning urban planning program, and was hired in public works as a as an associate transportation planner. Um, but they were in school in a field of study that was very specific, and the work that they got here at the city through a number of years worth of um, urban scholar experience gave them the work experience to be able to qualify for those positions. Um, and I, I will just say, I, because Urban Scholars started in 2012, most of those individuals are in a four-year degree program. So many of them are just now graduating, um, as you know, they came in uh, at their first year. And so I would expect over the next couple of years to be able to, as they graduate from high school and are looking for employment, full-time employment, that we'll see those numbers change a little bit as well. I mean, I think it is important to point out, again, going back to sort of the, the, the philosophies of the internships program, nowhere on there did you see the primary purpose, generally speaking, for internships at the city to date has not been around employment. It's been around exposing them to the world of work and, 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 and gaining some experience and um, encouraging them to look at public sector as, as an employer of choice down the line of when they, after graduation. But it really hasn't been a primary focus. Um, and, and that is, I believe, um, one of the things that that we're looking at the strategies that we should have a focus on employment. Um, however, where there is a desire to hire interns, and there are many departments um, that would love to hire interns um, right after graduation, there are barriers to employment that we have to address in order to make that uh, a smoother transition and process. Um, these challenges are not unique to the city. They are common amongst public sector organizations. Um, I'm going to talk about some strategies later where we have a partnership with four other public sector entities looking at this exact issue of, you know, we all operate within a civil service merit-based competitive hiring process. Anybody who's hired in the city in a non-appointed position must go through a merit-based competitive hiring process. Most city positions require job-related work experience. And graduating interns simply do not typically have those years of experience. And I think that is something that we need to look at across the board at the city. Um, interns right now are not eligible to apply for um, kind of the internal postings at the city. And there's this lack of centralized, you know, HR doesn't own any of these internship programs. It's either owned by a specific department um, in CPED, they have the step up. In civil rights, it's the urban scholars. And they all kind of have their own philosophy of what that internship and the primary purposes of it. But there isn't the centralized location where you can devise a, you know, a strategy direction and be able to have focus and alignment with the business needs of the city and to be re really be thoughtful around employment being one of the primary purposes for those. So I think, I think not having that centralized focus um, and to keep interns engaged with the city is a detriment. And then last but not least, I know it's, it seems like a small one, but frankly, and again, I think this goes out of the centralization theme, um, the timing of when folks are graduating, we don't have a focused thought around having positions available as, as folks are graduating, uh, particularly folks who've been through internships at, at the city and are graduating. And then there's no vacant positions in their field of study for which to hire. And so we sort of lose out there. And so having an intentional strategy around having vacant positions during those times. And then moving on to employment strategies, we do have some things currently in progress. Um, I just alluded a moment ago, the work is just beginning. And we're identifying both short-term and longer-term strategies. But we currently are partnering with four other local um, jurisdictions to develop, well, it's, it, it's a two-prong um, approach through the coordinator's office. We're working with the City of St. Paul, Ramsey County, Hennepin County, and the state of Minnesota uh, on two tracks. One is making changes to legacy hiring systems, like we have here at the city, as well as a pathways, pro, um, pathways initiative. And they are working to develop a public sector institute for internships. Um, that work just began in September. It's a year-long initiative. Um, the intent is to have not just recommendations, but roll out of initiatives in one year, so by September of 2018. Um, the part, we are currently partnering with Hennepin County. Um, Hennepin County, to 
at some degree has had more success, success in placing their interns in uh, full-time employment. Um, they have they have designed a series of jobs that are in non represent so they're not represented by a union. Um, and then they've, what they, I think what they've really done very nicely is they've taken a big step towards thinking about that minimum qualification in terms of years of experience and have found a very um, innovative way. They have the same thing. They, they'll have educational uh, requirements as well as work experience. And so someone coming out, let's say, with a planning degree okay, the, uh, this position that you're interested in requires a degree, which you have, but it also requires two years of experience, which they don't have. They're able to take that degree and make it a both and. It, it satisfies the educational uh, requirements as well as turn the curriculum into, if that were, if you were to turn that into work experience, how much work experience would it be? Um, and they've done a very, actually a very pretty scientific way of doing it, um, and that is something that we're partnering with them to learn what they've done to see if we could be replicated at the city. Um, and then obviously we're partnering um, very closely with both um, um, step up staff from step up and uh, urban scholars to explore public sector specific um, participation in the program. Uh, you know one interesting um, fact that came out of, of civil rights um, published in 2017 urban scholars kind of uh, state of state of 2017 urban scholar participation and I found one of their interesting statistics that nine out of ten of the urban scholars are considering a career in the public sector. So I find that very encouraging. Um, and I think we should leverage that. The next one. Okay, thank you. Um, so then we have some potential strategies that we've been um, we've been talking with both Step Up, uh, Urban Scholar, as well as internally here in Human Resources, some potential strategies. Um, these are not underway yet. We're continuing to work. Again, some of them are short-term strategies, some are longer term. And while there are, each of these could be considered individual tactics um, that could be implemented, I think connecting of the many, many of them together um, into a strategic direction that enhances really uh, the effectiveness overall of an intern, what I would like to see is an intern pathway model um, with a concentrated effort on urban scholars. Um, I would like to see, we'd, li we'd like to explore, again, it's a, probably a longer term strategy looking into 2018, but to formalize an internship succession model. We have seen the, the, um, the success of our Pathways programs, and to build an intentional model where we're starting in high school with our step up students, identifying what their career paths are, what their, what their intents are for their career path, for those that are moving into a two year or four year degree, Having place, having slots available in Urban Scholar so that they, they have kind of an entrance, an automatic entrance into Urban Scholar. Continued four years or two years uh, of, of Urban Scholar. And then having a, an actual pathway program at the end of that that's designed to be a direct hire into a city position. Now if there is a particular field of study or if they need additional years of experience, um, we've, we've we're going to be working with the Hiring and Promotion LM, uh, Labor Management Committee to talk about um, kind of revamping a city academy. Um, we had one up until about mm, seven or eight years ago, and it kind of it kind of went by the wayside as we had budget cuts. Um, and I'm looking; I'd like to look at revitalizing that as a as kind of a gap between you've finished and you've got your your you know your four year your, your degree and being able to have the qualifications uh, to do a particular job, and maybe that includes job shadowing in multiple city departments. Um, looking at aligning uh, internship programs in a centralized arena, again, I think there's a lack of consistent messaging, strategic programming, um, engagement of our youth um, as they move through a, a successive model, and then being able to expand and capitalize uh, graduates through the use of um, a bell curve staffing, which has been very successful in departments that have high turnover, so that there's con that, that they always have continuity of service. Um, and I think we can need to continue to benchmark intern program hires with other government agencies. We do have some. Their, their structure in their agency is a little bit different than ours, so it's hard to, to do an apple-to-apple -apple comparison, but I would like to do some additional benchmarking. And then setting a goal both for hire and for retention. Um, I don't think it's realistic to say 100% of our interns will, you know, will 
get employment at the city, I think that there is still value in having, you know, career exploration and um, uh, at the city, but that may not may not actually be city employment. They may go to Hennepin County. They may go to another public agency. Um, they may go. Many of them want to go into the nonprofit world. But setting a goal for for retention, uh, really accounting for sort of the, the financial investment that we have in our internship program, programs. Ms. Kruger, I'm going to ask you if you can step through the sure. end of your sure. presentation Absolutely. just a little more quickly. This sure. is not due to the importance of your presentation, sure. but I'm learning that we might be learning, might be losing uh, one council member soon, which means we only have seven for our quorum. So. Sure. Council Member Goodman. Uh, Madam Chair, I really think this, this is something that should be coordinated with the city CPED workforce mm -hmm. efforts too, and we certainly can direct it to the yeah. CD committee and maybe make a recommendation that they could sit down and partner with the Mark Brenda and Deb Arhelian and talk about how they can partner together. And we wouldn't really need to hear their <laughs> I don't mean it in any rude way, but I, I think the people who do this for a living on the workforce side should meet with the people who do this for a living on the HR side, because I'm not sure anyone here has any. I just, I just want to say I, I believe there is already a, a work team that every meeting I've had <laughs> On this topic, there have been folks from um, Deb R. Helgen's team. So well, I just they need say, to step up their efforts. <laughs> yeah, I think that is more the direction as we need to be a little bit more clear about the report backs and the and the timelines and 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 that this is something supported by the policymakers. Um, why don't you finish uh, what you want to highlight for us, and then I can make a motion. I think I will make a motion about a report back to here so that we can kind of keep up the attention mm -hmm. and sure. I think the desired urgency around this topic because it relates to our future workforce. Uh, in addition into hiring, I, you know, I think another thing that we need to take a look at, um, and it, I'm just going to be around retention, I think we also need to have a retention uh, strategy. Uh, looking at retention of interns that we have hired into permanent positions, uh, the retention of those, in, of those um, permanent placements is, is a little less than two years. Um, and I think we need to understand whether or not that's a good uh, measure of success or not and, and have some, some measures of success around that. I can be done. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I apologize. Okay. I just want to note for my colleagues that there was another slide that was on uh, retention with mm -hmm. some recommend. Maybe you want to turn to it. Um, which is on some potential uh, strategies for retention. If you want to turn to that slide, yeah, just hit a couple times. And um, so there are some specific recommendations relating to retention, which is one of the most, I think, pressing issues at the city based on some of your previous reports to us. Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to note I've been raising this issue uh, when I can, and this is more of a long-term comment, but we have these very early stage uh, violence prevention programs that are wraparound and really targeting folks who've been victims or perpetrators of violent crime to help them get into a new life. And a number of them have gotten GEDs, and I think over the long term, maybe um, there might be synergy there too, so we're creating opportunities as that next step along in their progression into the workforce. Um, so if that connection hasn't happened yet, that's really been managed through our health department and the police department, city attorney's office all together. But again, I think that's a longer term um, <clears throat> vision, but I think there could be some good synergy with that work happening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are some next steps that are identified as well. They include, if you want to slip to that slide, uh, research on other local intern programs to identify best practices and benchmark data, partner with Step Up and Urban Scholars to identify needs and barriers and prioritize short-term and longer-term priorities and identify goals and metrics for hiring and retention. Um, I have... Um, I noticed in your presentation that you talked only about benchmarking to other governmental jurisdictions. And I was a little concerned about that, just knowing that in Minneapolis, we haven't really had a robust program for this. I don't know about other government jurisdictions, and I'm concerned about us benchmarking 
to a sector of the economy or the employment sector that doesn't seem to, or that may not have prioritized these programs, and that should we be also looking at potential benchmark data in other sectors that are um, maybe something a little bit more comparable in uh, private and or nonprofit sectors. So that is something I would just like you to consider in coming back again, because I'm a little bit concerned about us benchmarking to the bottom. Um, and, uh, and, and how we might consider that. I'm going to, in addition to the receive and file, ask that uh, you come back to a appropriate committee of the city council. I, I think in a three months time would be good just so that we kind of, it looks like some of these are, you're still defining um, what you want to do and I think having a, a marker and putting this on the attention of the new council would be uh, good. So I think three months out would be a report back by um, March 1st. Uh, and if that sounds acceptable, um, then I would go ahead and move uh, that we uh, receive and file and direct staff to report back to a committee of the city council by March 1st of 2018. And we could also request that uh, you bring along with your team sure. folks from uh, the CPED uh, portion. And so I think the new council can kind of sort out how they want that to re be reported back. So discussion on that motion. Uh, seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, thank you okay. very much. And I do apologize that okay. different council members are running out of time. It happens. I'm going to read through our um, ways and means and consent agenda items because we need to be able to approve those. And I'm looking for my little sheet here. I never lost it. Okay. All right. So, um, colleagues, we have a consent agenda that has a whole lot of items. And I will be as brief as I can. Um, item number one, amendments. We are setting a public hearing for December 6th relating to amendments to the Municipal Minimum Wage Ordinance. Um, we are also, uh, this is wrong. I, I'm going to uh, change item number two to set a public hearing for December 6th relating to um, the City Coordinator Race and Equity uh, Division. Um, Number three uh, is approving appointments to the Minneapolis Workplace Advisory Committee. Number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are legal settlements. Item number uh, 11 uh, actually also is a legal settlement. Item number uh, 12 is a low bid uh, for Convention Center Front of House Exterior Lighting Replacement Project. Item 13 is acquisition of 2651 University Avenue Northeast from the state of Minnesota for East Side Storage and Maintenance Facility Project. Item 14, contract amendments um, for the ServiceNow Implementation Services. Item 15 is a non-disclosure agreement for telecommunications uh, services um, or authorizing a standard non-disclosure agreement for telecommunications services. Item number 16 is a contract amendment with BG, B2G now for continued use of LCP tracker application. That's complicated. Item 17 is a contract with Celco partnership <coughs> doing business as Verizon for safety cameras and video monitoring. <coughs> Item 18 is a contract with Power Team LLC um, for deduplicating services. Item 19 is uh, approval of the collective bargaining agreement with the Minneapolis Foreman's Association. Item 20 is a license agreement with Minneapolis Public Schools for space to provide public health services in the event of public health emergencies. 21 is accepting a grant from Clearway Community Minnesota for implementation of the menthol tobacco ordinance. Item 22 are the 2017 levy for special assessments relating to nuisance conditions. 23 is changes to Grow North Down Payment Assistance Program 24, <clears throat> City Administrative Fee for State General Obligation Bond Funded Development Projects. Item 25 is the Green on Fourth Apartments Final Tax Increment Financing Approval. Item 26 is a contract with the Timberwolves for bomb detection at Target Center. 
27 is a contract amendment with Rice Lake Construction Group for Fridley Softening Plant Recarbonation Improvements Project. 28 is another uh, contract amendment. This with Tool Design Group for Winter Maintenance Study. 29 is a limited use permit with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for Trail Segment on Industrial Boulevard at 35W. Item number 30 is a certified local government grant from the Minnesota Historical Society for Music History Context Statement. Item 31 is a request for proposals for engineering services for new water main crossing at the Mississippi River at 10th Avenue Southeast. Item 32 is Columbia Heights Campus Upgrades Project increased to the 2017 appropriation uh, for this project. Item 33 uh, is an increase to the 2017 appropriation for water distribution improvements. Item 34 is a bid for Fridley Softening Plant Cones and Flume Rehabilitation Project. This is the fifth phase of the project. Item 35 is a bid for Lindale Avenue Outfall Improvements. Item 36 is the 42nd Avenue North Street Reconstruction Project. It's a reduction to the special assessment. Item 37 is removal of assessments for the Minnesota Department of Transportation right-of-way parcels for the Nicollet Mall Reconstruction Project. And finally, uh, item 38 is a contract amendment with Queer Knight Group LLC for communication, public relations services for the Nicollet Mall Reconstruction Project. I will move items 1 through 38. Any discussion? Would anyone like to take anything off? Not seeing uh, anyone on approval say aye. Aye. We have approved items 1 through 38. We have moved on to item 39. Item 40, I will ask the clerk to perhaps be brief. I am not sure what the full item is, but this relates to a 2017 transition schedule. Madam Vice President, members of the committee, as you are aware, we normally adopt a calendar for the succeeding year, uh, identifying regular dates and times for committee and council meetings due to the transition that happens at the end of this year with the election and before the inauguration of the new council and its structure being set up, there is a fairly large gap. And so both for the members of the body and for the public uh, on the display, I have shown a draft calendar that staff has proposed. We had previously identified that the last meeting of council this year would be the 15th of December, but there were no committee meetings leading into that. Therefore, we're proposing to add three committee meetings in advance of the final council meeting because of the committees that have uh, statutory uh, time sensitive uh, property related issues. We're proposing to add on December 12th, that Tuesday at 10 a.m., a Z and Pete zoning and planning committee meeting and at 1.30, a community development regulatory services committee meeting. All other items uh, that need to be conducted before the end of the year would go to the Committee of the Whole then on uh, December 13th at 10 o'clock and all items for those three committee meetings would refer to the council meeting on the 15th. 15th would be the last meeting of this council, this body for this four-year term. Uh, the first inauguration for the new body is scheduled for the 8th of January, Monday the 8th of January, uh, 9.30 a.m. If we follow the pattern that was set the previous term, the council will have organized its new committee system and we would likely not have meetings that first week, which means that the first official meeting of the full council after it is seated in January would be possibly pushed to the 26th of January shown on this calendar. Because the Super Bowl is two weeks later and because I anticipate we will have lots of items to do, I am proposing that we would add a committee of the whole meeting on the 10th of January and a council meeting on the 12th so that we have at least an opportunity for one committee meeting where all time sensitive urgent issues could be referred to that one committee of the whole meeting to a uh, council meeting for final action on the 12th. And then we would start the normal two week cycle the following Tuesday, the 16th of January, the 15th being Martin Luther King Day, so that would be a holiday. So that once the new council is seated in January, the first full two week cycle would begin Tuesday, the 16th, uh, with the first full meeting of the council then on the 26th, with those two additional items, the committee of the whole on the 10th and full council on the 12th for urgent time sensitive issues that need to be done and can't wait. Wanted to just bring that to your attention so that we can proceed with that uh, schedule, let departments and staff and the public know that that's our intention moving forward through the end of this year and the beginning of next. Hmm. Discussion on this calendar. Council Member Gordon. So, do, so would we need to approve these and maybe we could approve it on uh, Friday at the council meeting? Certainly could. Uh, I, I don't necessarily need the official action. The council just wanted to tell you this is what we're planning to post. Uh, unless it 
doesn't meet with your approval or if you want to change it in some way, then we could certainly talk about it more. Otherwise, if this is what the council can concur with, this is what we would publish. Okay, do you probably have informal concurrence right here? Council Member Gubbin. I would just note we have to have a CD meeting, um, whether we like it or not, on the 12th because there's a voluminous amount of licensing and that kind of thing coming through, not as much economic development. And I would guess we will also have to have a, me a special meeting of the full council to approve things with regard to the Super Bowl, unfortunately. And, and I think it is cleaner if we actually voted on it. I mean, I'll move approval of this schedule if that feels like it's better than if we just leave it in limbo. If, we, if we're fine. So just, say that again? Um, I think um, it might be easier for everybody if the council approved adjustments to the schedule in addition to the calendar like this and it wasn't too informal. So I would move to approve this okay. uh, now if that, because uh, I think that might be helpful. Okay. All right. Um, then what, I've taken that as a motion to approve and uh, discussion on that. Seeing none on approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that item is approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we are losing some quorum, but I want to ask if there are any items from people's agendas that they would like to highlight for us. I know as we approach the end of the year, often there are important items. Uh, community development and regulatory services, Councilmember Goodman. So there are 20 items on our agenda for tomorrow. What I want to make people aware of is that on the 29th of November, the CDRS committee is going to be handling the Steve Friends license revocation issue. Uh, we also have a quorum question here uh, with two members for sure not being here. It's really important that all the other members will be here. And if there are other members of the council who have these properties in their wards, you might want to attend uh, the meeting. Um, so again, the 29th of November at 1.30, uh, there, there is a voluminous agenda as well. I mean, this one looks like nothing compared to the CD agenda on the 29th. Um, so I just wanna make sure folks know about that. There are a number of important items on this agenda as well, but I'm happy to hang out after and talk to anyone who has any questions about any of them. Thank you. Um, intergovernmental relations, we have just had that committee um, and approved our 2018 legislative agenda um, short list of priority items and uh, withdrawal from Red Rock uh, in support for the National Forest Service. Next, we have public safety, civil rights, and emergency management. Councilmember Gordon, was anything One there? very small item, you can check it out in your folder. Thank you. Next, we have uh, ways and means, which we read through as part of this agenda. Finally, we have zoning and planning with Council Member Bender. Um, just a quick note that on one item, we um, postponed the item. It was a building materials ordinance. I'm gonna check in with folks. I think some of us are feeling like there's a lot more work to do than is really realistic in the next two weeks. And so maybe it may be appropriate to return it back to staff for a bit more work. So I think I'll probably make that motion on Friday unless other, uh, I hear otherwise. All right, thank you very much. Um, with that, I believe we've concluded with our business. Uh, oh, I am sorry, there is, I, I missed the uh, actual motions that we had in front of us that I added to the agenda. I apologize. So if we could please <clears throat> uh, take a quick vote on those. Um, there were two items under what I did call uh, item number 41. Um, one is a request for a review of reporting, investigation, and discipline procedures for anti-harassment and conduct in the workplace. This was something that was I discussed with uh, Susan Siegel as well as Patience Ferguson to identify a best uh, language for review. Um, this would direct the Human Resources Department Ethics Officer and City Attorney to review the city's policies relating to respect in the workplace, anti-harassment, retaliation, conduct in the workplace reporting and investigation procedures for purpose of identifying modifications and improvements with special focus on how policies apply to and are utilized for elected officials, political appointed positions, and department heads. Such review shall include potential updates to the ethics ordinance, options for enhancing desired organizational culture, increasing ongoing awareness of reporting options, and independence of investigation and disciplinary mechanisms from actual or perceived influence by high-level leadership including 
elected officials, political appointed positions, and department heads who may be the subject of complaints. Such review shall seek feedback and input from the employee resource groups and labor slash board of business agents. Findings and recommendations shall be reported to the mayor and city council no later than March 1st, 2018. And then there is a second motion. I would move these both together unless people want to vote on them separately. Is a motion to direct staff to review and update city policies and procedures relating to safety and security for elected officials by January 1st, 2018 with ongoing assessment as needed. There was some discussion about what was the appropriate uh, uh, identification of staff leadership for this. And I'll just note that uh, several departments have identified that they will step forward and lead it with a little confusion. Should this, this be police department or so forth? But right now I have identified city clerk and city coordinator shall coordinate such review with leadership and participation from human resources, police department, municipal building commission, communications and others as necessary. So I would move both of these items um, and see is there a discussion or questions? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed, thank you, colleagues. And uh, with that, we are adjourned.